Next I'm going to talk about glitching. And glitching is something you definitely don't want in your digital system. And here I'm talking specifically about digital signals, not analog signals. And what do I mean by, by glitching? Well, let's say that we have a... I've lost my cursor there. Uh, let's say we have a signal where we have the low and the high level, digital low and digital high. So below this level, it's going to be counted as a low, and above this level, it's going to be counted as a high. Let's say we have a signal that comes in and comes up, and then there's some sort of overshoot and maybe a little mild ringing there, and then it comes down later and there may be some ringing. What would the output of this signal look like? Let me pause and draw that. The output of the signal would look exactly like what you want it to look like. It would go up, high, come over, come down, and go low. That's what you wanted and that's what you got. Now let's say in the case of maybe there's too much capacitance on the line so the signal transitions up and it's just slowly creeping up over time, and remember the x-axis here is time, and it doesn't quite get to that high level. You wanted it to get to the high level, but it doesn't quite get there. What's that going to look like? Well, it's going to look like a flat line, like that. I'm going to draw two more cases, and then I'll walk through each one again. Let's say we had another signal coming in that looks kind of like this. It comes in, and it overshoots, and then it rings back down, and then it comes back up, and then it, and it rings, and it stabilizes there. What would that look like? Well, it would start low, you expected it to be low, then it would go high, and then it would come back low because you triggered it on the low end, and then it would finally go high and stay high. You wanted it to go from low to high, and it did that, but then it had this glitch in the low direction, and then it came back up. Okay. The final example is a signal that kind of comes up and does some sort of non-monotonic behavior like this. And what's that going to look like? Because it's in this transition region here. That's going to look like who knows what. Let's say that's an unknown region. It's unknown what that's going to be. And there you go. Now this could be caused by who knows what. Uh, if you looked at your input signals, you may see that, and you would just have to start digging in and try to troubleshoot it. But let's talk about these other three cases, what might cause it. This overshoot here, this overshoot, may be caused, probably is caused, by too much inductance in the system or, or a resonant condition somewhere in the system. And you would go through and you may want to try to lower the impedance of your ground planes to lower the inductance, lower the loop inductance around your ICs, whatever, but that, that's what's causing that. And here it didn't cause too much of a problem because our signal came out like what we expected. This one is probably going to be caused by, well, let me write that out, uh, too much L. This one is too much capacitance. You're trying to charge up that capacitance and it can never quite get to where it needs to go in the time allotted to it. This one is uh, a related but different problem, and it's too long of cables. The signal is electrically uh, short compared to the length of the cables, and so uh, there could be reflections at the end, uh, signals traveling backwards and forwards, and the, the, the solution here is either to lower your operating frequency or decrease the length of the cables.